why did you ultimately stick with Voight? For the <coughs> um, once Edwin was okay, we decided Edwin was good to go, and obviously he was going to be in our lineup and look at him as our DH. Um, you know, then you're talking about, you know, filling out more of a bench role and just felt like the, the right-handed element with, with Luke um, probably made a little more realistic pinch hit option. Um, you know, probably wouldn't hit for <coughs> any of our right-handed hitters necessarily. And, you know, and, and certainly Luke's body of work and what we believe he could still provide is certainly in there, but a tough decision, and that's credit to, to Forty for how well he's performed. Uh, Buster towards the back. Aaron, one of the big questions coming into the month of September was when Stanton came back, what would he look like? In your eyes, what does he look like as you get going here? Good, good, and and frankly, even a little bit better than I thought. I um, feel like his at-bats have been, have been good. Um, he was able, one thing he was able to do this, you know, past month, even leading up to getting, getting back with us was, you know, I think see a lot of live at bats, um, off of pitchers when he was down in Tampa, even up here to a degree. So I feel like he was, his work was really good. Um, and then what I've seen, I've been impressed with how he's moved around physically with how he's run the bases, how he's moved in the outfield, cutting balls off. Uh, so that's been a little better than I expected and, and feel like he, he comes into this series in a pretty good place and a, in a good frame of mind. And one row in front of Buster, Brian. Aaron Glaber Torres is one of a number of guys in their early 20s in the league who, you know, could come up in big spots in October. Um, do you think that managers look at players that young with a little more trust in October now than they did when you played? Yeah, I think Why? that's that's fair. You know, I think in a lot of ways these guys are um, – probably a little more well-prepared early on. Um, um, and and I think that goes from a big league level. I think we've seen more and more the last several years, you know, guys come up from the minor leagues and, and instantly have impacts, probably more so. I, I don't know if that's actual reality, but it feels that way to me. And so my answer to your question from my perspective is yes. In the back, we have a question. Thank you so much. Good evening. Uh, I, I just wanted you to talk about um, the lineup, how you came to the decision, how that decision kind of plays into the fact that both you and the, and the twins are, are hitting, you know, so many long balls, and and how important it is that the bullpen has been rested for the for the last four days coming into tonight's game. Um. I mean, we certainly like the rest as far as any time we get our pen guys that are obviously so important to what we do. So hopefully um, these four days is something that serves them well moving forward, not only tonight, um, but throughout the series and, and hopefully throughout the month of October. Um, as far as the lineup, um, shook out pretty clear in my eyes. Um, you know, obviously only having two lefties in there against Barrios. Um you know, so just spacing them out and kind of deciding how to line them up. But it it wrote itself pretty well, to be honest. Uh, Joel, standing to your right. Aaron, you've been asked a lot about the, the playoff history of these two teams. Do you think playoff history means anything, including potentially that it's a burden for the team that has the dominant position <laughs> in that rivalry? Right. Well, I'm hoping it means something. <laughs> Um, but honestly, I don't, I, I, I don't think it factors much in here. We, we understand we're up against a, a great opponent. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people have talked about looking in the mirror a little bit, and I certainly think that's understandable with, with the quality of hitters we have and frankly, the quality of pitchers. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think history plays a huge role one way or the other. Um, I feel like the team that executes the best and, and, uh, you know, in, in, in this series with these two teams, obviously in the power that both teams display, um, you know, who can, who can limit the damage, um, from a run prevention standpoint, I think goes a long way in, in winning this series. 
We'll stay right there, Andy. When you're looking at one of the kind of roster bubble decisions, like with Lions, mm -hmm. are you weighing more how you think his stuff's going to play against a particular part of their lineup, or is it just how what he's shown you lately? I, I think it's a combo. I think you know we've we've really tried to get Lions into some situations this final month against some really good left-handed hitters, um, and to see you know how it would play, and I feel like by and large he did really well and, and we saw you know him have a lot of success and lefties not necessarily see the ball real well against him um so we do think there's some spots for him in this series that make some sense um you know this is a guy that you know even though it wasn't with us for a long time and spent a lot of time in the minor leagues this year this is a guy with a lot of major league experience and uh feel like he was the right guy you know especially you know when we didn't have cc um, he was the right guy to round out our rotation. So our row, staff. The second row on your right. Aaron, obviously the situation's a little bit different from last year to this year. You're kind of preparing for the wild card game last year, but this year win the division. Um, how has your preparation as manager changed from last year to this year, and what were some of your biggest takeaways from last year's postseason experience? Well, I mean, having the four days off, I mean, that's – you know, last year it was obviously right into the wild card game and then winning that and, and right on to Boston. So it it was, you know, we've had four days of knowing our opponent and, and kind of digesting it and being able to, um, you know, have our big advance meeting with our organization a couple of days ago. Um, you know, all our coaches in their particular areas have been able to dive in um, to all the things that they prepare normally so I think we've just had more time obviously <clears throat> getting some answers on some guys as far as health goes um this week play, you know was was important for us um and hopefully it's something that serves us well as far as taking from last year you know I, I take stuff from every day and that hasn't stopped since I got the job so whether that's spring training regular season postseason you know, hopefully I'm always growing as far as how I go about things. And the same row, John. Aaron, uh, with the two best home run hitting teams in MLB history facing each other, does that have to change anything about the emotional reaction, both to giving up and also hitting a home run on the bench? Hmm. Um, I mean, hopefully, you know, myself – our staff, our team um, is emotionally prepared to handle anything. Um, you know, how you handle things is a big factor in how you perform in this game. And that, that's the regular season, and that's certainly the playoffs. You know, you've got to be able to, um, you know, take a punch, handle success, handle failure, you've got to be able to do that if you're going to succeed at the highest level. And, um, you know, I feel like our guys are are excellent at that and, and certainly equipped to, to do that moving forward. In the left center aisle, Dan? Uh, you said leading up to this that you thought uh, Didi, th this time of year would be good for him in terms of turning his season around. What, what gives you that confidence that this is the time for him to finally get into a groove? First and foremost, he's a really good player, um, and and I just I feel like he's one of those guys that you know the bigger the bigger the stage the brighter the lights. Um, I feel like he 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 thrives in that, and uh, you know I feel like he's been healthy now for a while, um, and I feel like he's a guy that you know has a good at bat or two here I think that's something that could really propel him moving forward and you have you been convinced the whole time he's been back that that he's been healthy yeah yeah I mean I think the biggest thing was with Didi is obviously returning in a timely fashion like he was able to do from from Tommy John probably getting back a little earlier than some people expected but I think then having a couple bumps along the way as far as things he had to play through with the finger and then the shoulder that kind of altered his season a little bit things he was able to play through but probably really kept him from getting on one of those hot streaks that he's kind of been known for um but i do feel like you know he's been healthy now for a while and uh 
and still feel like his best baseball is ahead of him. And on the far left, Dave. Aaron, is it kind of fitting for the season that you guys have had that I think this is the first time that these nine players have been in, in a lineup together and it happens to be in the first game of the, the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 remarkable. You know, I think we've had some some good fortune here this last month. You know, a couple exceptions, obviously, with CC and, and Dellen. And, um, but for the most part, you know, I think, you know, John Carlo being able to get back in the way he ha has had was – has gone pretty well. Obviously, Seve coming back. Um, you know, Edwin having the questions going into this week, would he be able to get over that final hump and feel feel comfortable that he is? Um, so it's definitely good to go in with, um, you know, pretty much a, a loaded barrel, you know. And just with the kind of year that Brett Gardner has, and, and he winds up being your number three hitter for, for tonight, just some of the, the thinking going into that with some of the other – you know, big sluggers you actually have on the team? <clears throat> well, I mean, having two lefties. So just trying to, first and foremost, space those guys out. Um, you know, so our lefties have hidden some spots in the, all year because we don't have a lot of them. And, and, you know, especially with like Aaron Hicks down and stuff. Um, you're just trying to space them out. And, and I feel like Gardy, the year he's had and, and the matchup here makes sense to have him, you know, it's clear in my mind to have him in that three hole. The two last ones with Meredith and Ron. Aaron, I know you touched a little bit on it yesterday, but the Twins have played you tough this season. What do you look at as some of the challenges in facing this Minnesota team? Obviously, a lineup that, you know, does a lot of damage and can hurt you up and down, certainly with the long ball, um, but also a, a balanced attack. So, um, you know, good balance of right and left-handed hitters, switch hitter and Polanco up there towards the top. Um, and I think a pitching staff that's probably a lot better than, than people know, or, and, and I think some bullpen arms that have emerged for them, especially in the second half of the season, um, you know, that maybe a lot of people don't know about, but, but certainly have got our attention. I'll finish up with Ron. Are, is Hicks still in Tampa on the throwing, and what is the time frame for determining whether he'll have surgery or not? Um, yes, Aaron's in Tampa um, doing well. Um, <clears throat> I would say probably looking more and more like he won't need it, um, but I don't, I don't think that final determination has been made.